everybody. Uh, we are back live in the kitchen tonight cooking with Mrs. AAP. Um, it is Tuesday, November 3rd. Hope everybody got out to the uh, voting polls and cast their vote for this extreme election tonight. Um, we are going to do something, I mean, just about as southern as you can get is country fried steak and gravy. Um, so the first thing I'm going to do is actually come over here to the main pan, the meat pan, I call it. And let's heat up some shortening. Um, I got a little bit of bacon grease I'm going to throw in there. I got a little bit of ghee I'm going to throw in there. Kind of get a good blend of some different fat profiles in there. Usually, um, if you get a good bit of ghee and a good bit of bacon grease, you can get a really good flavor transfer over to the meat. But um, tonight, I don't have a lot of bacon grease. I have What's up, Michael fried. Jordan? Good to see you, brother. How you been doing? Hey, I got Michael kicks. Jordan. What's up, vegan realist David Carlisle? What is up? What is up? We got the hey, gollies, too. Heck hey, yeah. Mr. Scully. So I'm not going to crank this all the way up just to start melting this shortening, y'all. I'm going to put it on about six. This is your typical Crisco vegetable shortening. This is the, the Carlini brand from uh, Aldi's. If y'all caught my Aldi's haul earlier, I get a lot of stuff from Aldi's. Um, I get a good bit of stuff from Aldi's. And then I get a lot from Sam's. I keep forgetting to get the world from Sam's. Oh. Hey, Angela Betts. Good to see you tonight. Hope you're doing well. Good to see you. It's been a while, too. Yes, ma'am. It sure has. Joe, <laughs> awesome one. What's up, brother? How you doing tonight, Joe? Hey, guys. Thank you all for joining us again. So, I cook my steak almost all the way submerged. Not all the way submerged, but almost all the way. So, with a pan this big, you're going to need a lot of grease, people. And some folks will go the shorthand of it and just use straight vegetable oil. And you can um, for frying. Um, you, there's peanut oil. They sell all kinds of different oils you can get. But um, I myself enjoy a blend of fats mixed with a vegetable Crisco. So we're going to get some bacon grease in here, like I said. Um, it even still has some little drippings in it, which never hurt anybody. E. Um, Reed, what is up? ALW Explorations. Good to see you back, my friend. <laughs> Good to see y'all. I got um, kicks. Heck yeah, my boy right there. Y'all check him out. I'm going to go ahead and splurge with the last of this ghee in this container. Y'all caught my Ollie's haul. I got a few more containers today. Clarified butter simply means that all of the impurities have already been cooked out of this butter. So you're not going to have any splattering and sputtering. Um, it'll handle a higher um, heat as well. You can see the smoke point of this ghee is 450. And um, I'm going to grab a temperature gauge. I usually do run a temperature gauge on my oil when I'm frying. Because I don't want to go much over 350 to 375. Peak is 375. Um, so you can see your smoke point is 450 on this ghee. Um, it's usually, I don't know if it's even labeled. I don't think it's labeled on the vegetable shortening. But your smoke point is probably a little bit lower on vegetable shortening. I would say around 425 um, is when you get a smoke point. And that's literally, you guys, what that means that's when you start to get smoke and burning in your oil. Um, and when it's scalded like that, you don't want to continue to use it. And it's not really of any use at that point for gravy either. So it's really important when you use your fat. And that's the other thing, guys. I'm going to use some of this fat for a gravy. Once we get some good pan drippings in here from the beef, um, this will turn into a roux for my gravy. So, um, What's up, Chef Life? Mariah Hyatt, hey, David Chef Carlisle Life. still rocking. We got Joe, awesome one, up in here with us right now as well, too. We got ALW Exploration and E. Reed. Hope y'all are having a great evening. So, I'm um, just kind of watching this for a second, guys. I know it looks like I'm just standing here playing with the grease, and I am. <laughs> um, my pan is a little bit warped from years of use, and this middle sets higher than the edges. And so, I just want to look at my fat height in the middle of the pan. And I'm going to need a little bit more than I've already put in here. Um, I can already tell because I want to get that meat at a good point of submersion. Not all the way, but I want to get some good grease on it um, to where it's not fully submerged, but it's getting about halfway up the meat. So I'm going to let this come down, melt in, probably do one more scoop, and then we'll be done with the shortening. I know it sounds like mad science, but really I just want to make sure I have enough grease in the pan because when you go to fry meat in a pan, 
that meat um, is breaded and it absorbs this grease up and I don't want to be left with a bare spot in the middle when it comes time for my second round of meat because usually I do two rounds of meat to feed all of these youngins. Big um, happy birthday to Mariah Hyatt too. We got Sister yeah. Golden Hair joining us right now as well. Good to see you tonight Sister Golden Hair. I'm going to hold this Crisco, this shorten it out you guys just in case I need to add some more after the first round of meat and um, let that start to melt in and converge together. Again, that's ghee, bacon fat, and a shortening that I've blended in here together. Um, and that's just gonna come up to temperature and we'll be over here, you guys. Next thing I'm gonna do is we're gonna do some potatoes tonight um, to go with that gravy. I'm not gonna mash them. I'm actually not even going to peel them all the way. I know y'all probably think I sound crazy. Um, I love it when we boil down the potatoes and leave them cubed to where they're super soft and then we just melt a ton of butter over them and salt and pepper and I'll be doing onion in with them and everything just kind of comes together kind of clumpy lumpy and um, it also allows me to leave half of the skin on so I literally do racing stripes <laughs> on these folks I'm gonna do half of the skin on half off what's up Kayla fan number one how you doing tonight hey, good to see you too yeah she just kind of threw a little bit of everything in the pan tonight <laughs> but whatever floats her boat as long as you got All enough right. grease in the pan to get your meat under it then you're good to go mr doughboy what is up how you been doing man well you know chick-fil-a uses peanut oil okay jen life what's up sister how you doing tonight jen i don't know if y'all knew this but back in the day McDonald's used to use straight beef tallow. Good beef evening, tallow Ashley. Is straight beef fat rendered down into straight beef fat. So when Mr. AAP and I had our seafood restaurants um, going, we actually ordered in beef fat cubes to melt in our commercial fryers. Mr. AAP and I had the great big 150 pound deep fryers for the seafood restaurants. And we would melt giant 50 pound blocks of straight beef fat to fry our seafood in. And you want to talk about something amazing? <laughs> Is eating a fried shrimp out of straight beef tallow fat. What's up, Thomas Gaming? Good evening, my friend. Hope you're having a great day. And Terrence Schroer, what hey, is up, Terrence. my friend? How you doing tonight, Terrence? Hey, friends. How are y'all tonight? So I am um, cubing up these potatoes i'm not gonna do yeah peanut oil is a good oil to fry and i love peanut oil yeah peanut oil is what your chick-fil-a fries come out of <laughs> um with a seafood restaurant where we specialize in fried seafood um that beef tallow that beef fat that mr ap and i used the to animal order. beef fat oh is the way God. to go i mean if you want that top quality like steakhouse style flavoring <laughs> if you can get your hands on some of that animal beef fat to fry in that is the way so to go in this house the closest we can get to the beef tallow is going to be the uh the bacon grease <laughs> and um i have been known guys if i have it I will fry eggplant or squash or fried okra um, or even fried pork chops and beef in straight bacon fat. And it is freaking amazing. I'm not going to lie. That's going to be enough potatoes for us tonight, guys. Um, we are going to have some peas as well and the gravy and the meat. So um, I don't ever make more than I know that we're going to eat in one night when it comes to the starches just because I don't need a bunch of leftovers. I'd rather have leftover meat, if anything. Um, I don't save a lot of leftover sides. So I try to just make it so there's not much. Yep, you're right about that, Sister Golden Hair. Things were better back then because they didn't think about, <laughs> you know, health as much. <laughs> well, people coming to our restaurants didn't know they were getting straight. P-Class. Unless they asked for it. For How you doing, P-Class? Okay, y'all see I'm doing one small onion in with all those potatoes. I'll use more onion if it's more potatoes. Um, and I don't even know how to describe how I just did that onion. I don't know. I end it and then I slice it and then I peel it and then I chop it. <laughs> <laughs> we got William Pops Newell on. What is up? He's hey, in line Mr. at the front Bell. door with his meal ticket. Hurry, I am hungry. <laughs> so, hey Pops, are you coming on live tonight, my friend? 
Cousin Combo King, what is up? Go ahead, Mrs. A. It's okay. I'm going to go ahead and pre-salt and pepper these. The good thing about potatoes, y'all, is that they are super forgiving with salt. Also, a quick old school um, note, if you ever over salt a stew or a soup or anything, all you need to do is chop a potato in half or quarter and throw it in and that potato will suck up all that extra salt that you put in there you can see the onions are kind of getting to me i'm getting a little watery that was a pretty strong little onion right there um, i'm gonna sneak over here y'all and i'm not gonna add anything but water to these potatoes um besides the salt pepper and uh onion i don't really do any garlic in the potatoes like this um because we're just going to add some butter back to them after we strain them when they're good and boiled down. We got smoking Sid up in the house hey, right Sid. now. What's up, Sid? How you been doing, bro? Good to see you. So you can Pops see. is getting ready for a huge move. I, I hope that goes well, my friend. You guys, I use a big pan for potatoes, and I come, you know, pretty good up over a good inch over the potatoes um, whenever I cook them. And I'm going to put them on... I'll put them on a fast bowl right here so we can get going while we fix the peas up a little bit. Nini UK Vlog, what is up? We still got Michael Jordan hanging strong with us too. And we got P class in the house saying hey, what is P up class. to Sid. Hey, Michael Jordan. How's everything in the UK, Nini? Good to see you tonight too. Absolutely. Terrence Trover's still up in here. What is my friend? Y'all so, check him out. He's got a great channel. Just to recap, you guys, if you're just getting in here, we've melted some shortening, some vegetable shortening. We've melted some ghee, which is clarified butter, and we've melted some bacon fat. And the bacon fat still had some drippings in it from the last breakfast. So uh, it's going to be a really, really awesome, flavorful pop of uh, grease there once we get going with the meat. Heck yeah, what is this? We got Z Root up in here. What is the name? It went by Zero, uh, Z, Zero Out the E. Bam! What's going on, my friend? How you doing today? Um, usually I will have some frozen peas, but I stopped up on green beans. They didn't have any peas at Sam's when I just went the other day. And I didn't even think about it today because the freezers are so full right now. But I do have some cases of sweet peas I found. Um, I love the very young, small sweet peas. They're a sweeter flavor. They're smaller. Um, they are in a bunch of juice. I keep that juice. I add some water back to it. You'll see what I do in just a minute. And it's perfectly fine to use canned peas um, on the stovetop. When you're doing it my way, and I say my way kind of loosely, when you're doing it this way, um, I... As you know, almost always have to add some kind of meat to my vegetables. I know that sounds terrible. Even folks used to ask me in the restaurants, they'd ask the girls up front, do y'all have any vegetables without meat in it? <laughs> so I had to start making some uh, some vegan and, and vegetarian meat, you know, for the restaurant. Because it's just not something we Southerners think a lot about is just vegetarian vegetables. <laughs> hey, LW says that sounds... <laughs> Lovely. Um, so I'm chopping up very loosely, you guys, some bacon. I am, whenever I do vegetables and they're going to be boiled like this, um, I use the pan, the cutting board last for the meat. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to set the Dutch oven back here on the skillet. Um, probably back left. Right there. And I'm going to cut her up on high. And I'm going to throw that bacon in. Now, as soon as that bacon starts to melt. Thank you, Zero. Is when I'm going to add the onion to it. So I'm going to go ahead and chop up an onion and kind of get it going. This meat and onion mixture is a base I use for most all the vegetables. Sometimes, like with the beans the other day, I'll throw the, uh, the raw veggies in in the beginning. And it's because those green beans were frozen. I can put everything in. But because these are canned vegetables, they've been soaking in liquid, they're basically ready to eat as soon as they're hot. And I don't want to put everything in all at once and let it come to a boil and go hard. Um, I'd rather just bring out some of the flavors and then we're going to add some water in, add some um, cubes in. I have the uh, chicken cubes. Now, if y'all don't do much along the lines of meat or meat cubes you can find veggie cubes i've seen them they do exist 
I'm not going to say I know where because I get all over the place when it comes to shopping. Um, guys, it's also fine that I'm chopping this onion over where I just did that raw meat. I want to make it clear that I know what I'm doing because this onion is about to be cooked. If I was serving anything ready to eat off of this cutting board, I would have grabbed another board. I would have never chopped this onion on top of that raw bacon that I just put there. So I know, just in case y'all are about to have a heart attack. <laughs> um, all these little onions are strong today. Goodness gracious. Okay, I'm going to sneak open a couple cubes. We're waiting on that bacon to come up to sizzle. I guess I could have put the pan on a little bit earlier. I didn't think about it. Bacon grease and the grease over there. Like I said, I put it on kind of low. <laughs> Goodness gracious. Hope y'all are having a good evening too. We appreciate y'all joining yes. in. I'm going to sneak, um, ooh, that onion. Mrs. AAP then snuck another pack of them fireballs up in here. So we're going to have to have a little <laughs> chill session coming up in a night or so. Yeah. So you know, I can probably some butter. I was grabbing a heat out. Um, I've got just some regular old butter, y'all. I'm going to sneak in the pan with that bacon. Um, I usually always add butter with the, uh, with the vegetables as well on top of the meat. So I don't want to cook this bacon much at all, you guys. You see how we're getting a little bit of sizzle out of it? That's all I wanted was just a little bit of sizzle, a little bit of bacon um, juice start coming out and flow. And I added that onion. Um, got to add that onion to it right now. And I also want to want to watch the onion because this is going to be a. Um, I did Appreciate you being here, Joe. Cut. I did do a coarser cut on this, and I meant to do it smaller. I'm come back through and just amend that a little bit. I probably won't even hardly use all this onion because it's just four cans of peas. But I am going to get those onions cooking just a little bit in that meat and butter before I come and add some water in those chicken cubes. And I think that's plenty of onion for those four cans of peas. I'm letting that simmer for just a second. What temperature you got your grease on? The grease, I've got it on six right now. And I'm actually need to grab a thermometer. What's up, Tennessee Dud Scratcher? How you been doing, my friend? Good time, uh, Good to see you, my friend. Long time no see. Hope everything's going well with you in Tennessee today as well. This is a present from the Cisco rep from the restaurant. Um, in the commercial kitchen. Winter days, what up? Your big commercial fryers, they have settings underneath them, so you can just set them on 350 and forget them. And it's a little bit different when it comes um, to running a household. <laughs> now, what I'm going to do is make sure this pan is centered in the very middle. Annette and that came in. How you doing, Annette the Crow? How you doing? She said the southern lady there cooking barefoot in all Tennessee here. <laughs> we know you all about the bacon flavors. Good for everything. LOL. Good to see you, Annette. Hope you're having a great night that tonight. We got right. Blind Cube up in here, too. What is up, Blind Cube? God bless America. What is up? Y'all need to introduce Michigan to a southern-style restaurant. I know. We really should, my friend. <laughs> Seafood or pizza, we could really tear it up in that industry. Now, Mr. AP is the pizza man. I don't know if I told y'all that or not. I keep mentioning the seafood restaurants, but uh, we also had pizza kitchens. Mr. AP and I had a pizza restaurant in downtown Gatlinburg, Tennessee, as well as North Myrtle Beach, South Carolina, before we ran into our seafood restaurants in Myrtle Beach and Georgetown. Uh, we actually had a pizza place in Charleston, South Carolina. So we've made it around with our restaurant. I'm actually just bumping this down. This grease got a lot hotter than I thought it would, super fast. Well, now you do have that sitting on the, on the middle in the metal, so you're not really getting the heat no, of the oil by doing that. I was going to adjust it, and then I figured I'd just add some oil to it for a minute. Best thing you can do is after you get your meat floured up, is take a tiny little ball of that, drop it down in there, and, and see how quick yeah. it turns golden brown. It's hard. You really want to have a floating temp, you guys, versus letting it touch the pan. Um, <laughs> Jen said she'd be front row for the seafood feast. <laughs> oh my gosh, Jen. Yeah, we, we've done a lot in our years. Um, that's for sure. Do we got Barefoot Adventures in here? <laughs> <laughs> Is that what Mrs. A ate? No, we do. Barefoot Adventures, what's up, my friend? How you doing? I thought they were We do got the Barefoot Cook in here. <laughs> <laughs> Hope you're having a good evening, my friend. Thank you for joining us tonight as well, too. I'm not going to get an accurate temp on this because I don't have enough oil in here. Well, like it. I said, the best thing to do is just to drop a little piece of flour in there. It's touching the bottom on me. Okay. So 
So I'm actually done with this cutting board for right now. I'm going to scooch it out the way. I know that that, you can see this isn't smoking real heavy, so I know that it's not, you know, 450. Well, what, what you said 450 was a smoke point again? Yes, it's a smoke point, but there's a lower smoke point to the Crisco, so you want to watch that. I just turned it down just so I'm not doing anything crazy over there. Um, I am doing something crazy over here, though, y'all. Look at that. I'm burning the meat. <laughs> worried about that. <laughs> See, I keep telling y'all I do stuff low and slow and I forgot to cut it. That's okay though. Look at that. It's going to be beautiful. That is just some good caramelized onions and a little bit of, of fat at the bottom. So that's nothing that won't scrub out of that pan, y'all. That's flavor. That's flavor. That's right. <laughs> 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 All right. I'm going to grab a um, measuring glass and get some water going in there. Look at what she's done here, folks. <laughs> but that's not bad. A little bit of burn on bacon and onions is fine. <laughs> I forgot to bump the thing down. This is how to burn food with Mrs. AAP. <laughs> you know, I'm usually so good about it, too. <laughs> I got to worry about that hole over there. Okay, I'm going to add this in slow. This is a cast iron, you know, pan, so it's not going to hurt nothing. That's plenty of water right there, because like I said, there's water that's in with peas. Um, <laughs> I can't believe it. So that. all that was just for the peas, my friends. Yeah, that's just the peas. Whew. And it's only because the peas are soaking and they're unliquid. If I had frozen peas, I would have just thrown everything in like I did for the green beans the other night when we had the beef roast. I could have just thrown everything in. Um, but anytime I have canned vegetables, I make the uh, seasonings first and then add water and <laughs> William said it's half price now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I done scald a little bit of butter to the bottom of the pan. That's all right. It'll come up. It'll boil up. It'll be good. Those cast iron pans are good for everything. Got to love that ceramic coated cookware. Heck yeah. Yeah. That's a cast iron with that coating on it. Um, this pan will last forever. I love cast iron. Um, even if it gets gnarled up a little bit, it, you know, the iron's under it. It's not like these. where these get gnarled up? You gotta replace the real ceramic ones. All right, guys. So I've got three cubes. Um, I think that's plenty for that little bit of water I just added. It was probably about three cups, honestly. Um, I'm not gonna use the beef, uh, the chicken cubes, or anything else tonight. I'm gonna stick them up the side, out the way, and I'm gonna get rid of this raw meat. And we can come over here and start prepping the meat. I'm opening up those cans of peas too. Oh, these youngins had me run ragged today. Heck yeah, that's the way to do it, God bless America. They did their pot roast in a Dutch oven. Yep. Yep. I'm still at the front line with Jennifer. Bang! Heck yeah, <laughs> sister Golden Hair still rocking with us as well. So I'm going to pop open these cans, y'all. Don't let anybody feel bad about eating out of a can. We eat plenty of vegetables. Oh, that's the so best kind of sweet can. peas right there, though. Them little leisure sweet peas. Yeah, they're delicious. Some good eating right there. I'm going to go ahead and dump all these in. It does take four cans to feed this army. I know y'all are thinking, oh my gosh, but we're, we got eight of us. And um, baby Levi is starting to eat more and more textures and more and more <laughs> stuff, too. So I might Scully, even... what's up, brother? How you doing, Scully? Smash him some peas. Tennessee Dead Scratcher says, heck yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I know I got people that pick on me all the time. I say that a little bit too much, I guess. No. <laughs> it's fine. How's life treating you, Scully? I'm going to sneak a little bit of garlic in with these peas, too. There I go. They smell You got to get some garlic in there, too? Yeah, I'm going to get some garlic in there, too. Well, garlic and onion and bacon with some chicken cubes in the peas. But I don't do garlic and potatoes. Now, if I'm roasting, uh-oh, uh -oh, man said he can't eat the peas. Why? <laughs> Living better with style. What is up? How y'all been doing? What's wrong with peas? Hope y'all are having a good evening today. Peas are good now. I guess I take the sweet out of them when I put all this stuff in them. Hope everybody got their votes in. Alright, here we go. I'm trying to get too much garlic juice, but I do. I mean, I guess it's a teaspoon. He's got an allergy to the sweet peas. Dang, that stinks, really? man. Sweet peas has always been one of my favorite things with the country style steak or Look at that, you guys. fried chicken, whatever. Let's AP zoom in on that. They're not boiling yet, but look how good that little bit of caramelized onion and bacon looks in there. Oh my goodness. Those would be some good daggum peas right there. <laughs> This will be a first for me. I've never had the peas like this either. 
Yes, you have every time. Oh, you do them like that every time? Yeah. <laughs> what do you mean? <laughs> you just ain't up here with me when I'm saying something. Looks pretty good. Okay, y'all. Anytime you're doing beef, I don't care if it's that beef roast of the day or what it is, you want to make sure your beef is up to room temperature before you mess with it. That's going to be super important. I'm not even going to mess with it even yet. I'm going to come over here and start to mix up my flour and my, um, I'm going to keep the strainer handy because I'll need that for the potatoes in a minute and that just has some water in it. That's Pops, I didn't get to see. Did you say you were going to go live tonight? Oh, is it already 7.39? Dang, where did the day go? Is it, no, it's 6.39. Is it 6.39? Yeah, my oven didn't mix it up. Pops, you going live tonight, bro? Just curious. He's got a great channel, my friend. Y'all need to keep your eye on him, especially if you're into growing your channels. That's a good place to go and pick up some awesome friends. So I kind of do it every mixy way y'all can think of. Tonight, I am not going to season this flour. And the reason I said it like I said it is because if I am making a gravy at the end, I do not season the flour because I want to season that gravy with salt and pepper and have a pure meat flavor. I don't want to have a bunch of season ends in it. That's awesome, um, Pops. So anytime I do something fried like this. Ghost Pirate, I what's up, brother? plenty of flour in the pan. I don't want to come back and hardly mess with any extra flour. But I do use what's left over after I'm seasoned, after I'm done with the meat. I'll use some of this flour to go into the grease to make a roux for the gravy. Um, when I fry my steaks, I do the egg mixture. Tag on, um, David. I know it seems to be that way everywhere we go. They're picking the and worst then, people in the world to run the country. And oh, goodness. The justice system and everything is all screwed up. I don't trust none of them. I'm looking for my we got Carl up in here. What is up, Carl Stevenson? How you doing today, my friend? I think my list is right over there. Good to have you back, my friend. Hope you're having a great evening as well. You guys, Ganja Wizard, what is up? I'm coming back over to the evaporated milk. It's room temperature. It's easy to use and stuff like this. You don't have to worry about it being cold and making the meat cold again. I want an even fry all the way through my meat. So it's super important that you keep it room temperature. Um, so yeah, that's another little secret. And I'm sure most of you probably already know, let your meat get up to room temperature before you fry it. That beef. way it doesn't drop your frying pan temperature way down for one and it'll cook the meat more evenly and it'll keep that skin on better as well too. Yes, your beef. You want your beef to be room temperature. Um, there are other meats like pork that you don't want to get all the way hot before you cook them. Um, Heck yeah, Pops, be careful out there and stay safe during the move. I hope it all goes well for you and congratulations, my friend. Yes, it's exciting. So you guys... Tell Crystal we said hey. When it comes down... To making this, I want more milk than eggs. <laughs> Thank you very much, Mariah Hyatt. And I am not, I'm going to say it again. Hey, Teresa, good evening. I am not going to season the eggs or the flour. Now, I know y'all have seen it all which ways of people seasoning this and seasoning that. Um, and I'm not going to do that tonight because I want to preserve that flour for a gravy. But what you are going to see is this meat resting for a hot minute after I flour it. So let that coat and go on there. Wendy O, what is up, Wendy O? How you doing? So just to recap over here, folks. I did put on some grease. I've got um, some bacon grease. I've got some ghee, some clarified butter, and I have some shortening um, all mixed up in here. I've got some potatoes, some onions, um, salt and pepper on to bowl right here, and I'm going to bump them back up. And then I have the back burner on high for the peas and we did caramelize a little bit of onions and some bacon fat and some butter all together before we added our peas and our chicken bouillon cubes to that the reason i did that is because it's canned peas y'all hey grandma moses how you doing hey grandma nascar nana what is up what is up how you doing nascar nana Lord. somebody just do that hope y'all are having a great evening 
getting ready to fry up some steak. Got some potatoes down up in here. Sweet peas over here with bacon and onions as well as beef bouillon. Chicken. Alright. So this is my oven. Chicken. Chicken. This is my Aldi's meat. If y'all saw my video earlier, I went to Aldi's. I picked up the meat. And I said I would show y'all about separating this meat. Hey, BB Truth, what's up? Good evening. How you doing? Hey there. Hey there. Um, this is cube steak. Okay. This cube thing's actually letting me turn people moderators tonight. So y'all keep on coming. If y'all got any new content out there, feel free to drop your links. Okay. Cube steak is nothing but a sirloin. Normally a sirloin that has been cubed and processed um, to grind it down some. So, when I was talking to y'all earlier, I made a quick video about tonight with my grocery haul. When you separate this meat, what they give you in this pack is four cube steaks. And you can see they're cubed down. Now what I've done in the past, when we've been on a really, really tight budget, and I knew the kids just maybe weren't hungry and we were just, you know, making stuff to make stuff, you saw me, I just slid that piece in half. You can sneak in here and you can actually <laughs> sneak the whole thing in half. And Mr. AP hates when I do that because it gets thin. You see that, y'all? And you don't have to have a pretty piece of steak, okay? Scoop of Steve, what's up? I'm here to tell you, these pieces like that are going to fry just as pretty as a big flat round piece, okay? So, just... For tonight, because we have extra meat in here tonight, I'm going to keep them whole and chunky and thick for Mr. AP. Um, but I am telling you, if you're on a budget and you sneak in with some cube steak like this, the way they process it, you can sneak it in half again. And I'm not talking in half and half. I'm talking about literally in half. It comes apart at the seams. You see that? I just turned it inside out. And you don't have to have pretty meat to fry, okay, y'all? It's going to fry up all the same. But by making it thinner like that, I have just cut that frying time in half with it from a piece like that. Hmm. Um, so, yeah, it doesn't have to be pretty to fry it. So that's what she's doing. <laughs> she's splitting it in half. Some of them I have split in half over here, just doing it that fast with my hands. I know how to move them apart. Just work with them like that. You can have little pieces. You can have big pieces. You don't have to have something all, you know, gorgeous for a fryer. Um, if it was a restaurant, obviously, when we did country fried steak at the restaurant, um, which we did. We did fried chicken, country fried steak, barbecue chicken, and all your seafood. Uh, the boys would keep them whole. And we'd have actual fried sirloin at some point. Some of them would be cube steak that were fried. Uh, we call it chicken fried steak. So that is what you're looking at tonight is going to be a sirloin like that and I'm just kind of going through I'm kind of stretching them out a little bit just for the sake of frying time tonight and I'm short bus in. what's up my friend how you doing short bus I'm kind of getting everything flattened in the pan so I can season it in case y'all are wondering what in the world I'm doing playing with all this raw meat I know y'all keep tuning in every night y'all see me playing with raw meat <laughs> okay I'm gonna wash my hands now and we're gonna season it Got your egg wash right there. Yeah. Evaporated milk and egg wash. Now y'all saw I used the milk. You can use water. Um, same with the scrambled eggs, y'all. You can use water at any point in time as a sub if you don't want to use milk. Um, but usually the folks that are worried about using milk don't even eat eggs. So we got that. Let me go ahead and stir those things up. Now I'm also gonna sneak something in over here. Mr. AP ain't usually up here with me. He be sneaking stuff. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sneaking in some Texas peat on this meat. Yeah, Anytime, buttermilk is really good, Annette. When I fry milk, um, if I'm frying chicken even, and I do a buttermilk um, soak on the chicken, I add Texas peat. Texas peat um, is my favorite hot sauce, but it also tenderizes that meat and brings it up a whole nother notch. Now, let me tell you this. When you cook with Texas peat, and you're physically heating stuff up that has Texas speed in it, you burn off the heat, okay? So you're getting a, like a vinegary profile. That you, it's on the back end. It's not a full flavor like if you were to douse it on a piece of cooked meat. 
Yeah. Um, so I always not sneak like a sneak. mouth burner. No, it's not a mouth burner. So I'll sneak Texas peat on like that across all of the meat on one side only. <laughs> <laughs> William Newell said the line is growing. <laughs> um, trying to be as. Check out Teresa Lagar's video as well, too. If they're dropping the links, feel free to grab them up. These are great people up in here. Guys, Check out their videos. Remember to hit the like buttons when you watch the content as well, too. That's important for everybody. I do a heavy seasoning on one side of the meat, and then I kind of slush it all together. Um, I've always done it that way. Sometimes if I'm in the mood, then I'll turn it and flip and do an easy coating on both sides. This is garlic salt and, and parsley is all this is. And you don't have to be all fancy because I'm going to slush it all together in a second. Um, garlic salt and parsley. You get that salty, that garlic profile. Garlic salt is amazing on chicken too. It's one of my go-to seasonings. On top of my Montreal steak seasoning. Quick shout out. I don't know if he's here. Sunrise Sugar Shack. Blackberry Jam. Homemade with love. That's from Mr. Sunrise Services himself. If y'all yeah. do not have Sunrise, you need to find him on there and order you some jams, jellies, some moonshine. Um, he has it going on. But for right now, I have the Montreal steak seasoning in here. And that is a phenomenal, one of my favorite seasonings of all is Montreal steak seasoning. It's my go-to seasoning. And I am doing a good heavy coating on there. When That's he said this is do. our favorite meal. <laughs> You're welcome, Teresa. That's all I'm going to do with this meat is my Montreal steak seasoning. It's got everything in it you could possibly want to add to that, plus the ground pepper, plus the garlic salt. You don't need any extra salt or any extra pepper in this. And we're still looking good over here. We're boiling some potatoes. Um, the beans, peas back there are fine just to simmer. You know, they're not quite even simmering or boiling yet, but they'll be coming to a bowl soon. That's a small burner back there, so I didn't expect it to catch up too fast. Now the fun part, y'all. I am going to dive into this raw meat and work it in a little bit. Hope everything's going well, Scully, too, man. Yeah, Appreciate you coming tonight. Scully's made a great novel. My friend, he's finally had one published. Y'all check him out. He oh does stories on his channel. That was a Make sure y'all check out his channel as well, too. He's got great stories on there as well. He's a great friend. Support your channel. Make sure y'all scoop him up. So, y'all, I am coming in, and I'm just mixing that meat up to a hot mess again, making sure that seasoning got worked in, making sure the hot sauce got worked in. You can also add some Worcestershire. Um, if you want a different flavor profile, you can add that in, and it'll be fine. But I'm telling you, just the amount that I have right there is perfect. Um, for the meat that we're doing here tonight. And I'm going to um, wash my hands a little bit, and I'll be right back. Come on, is Levi okay? Yeah, I think Luke's getting him right now. <laughs> What's going on with Levi? Landon. Scoop him up. Landon, come get Levi. Landon. we got some lazy little brats here in the living room. <laughs> I hope it's not messing there. It's probably destroyed. <laughs> Nah, it's not too bad. Okay, here we go. Bad kids. <laughs> All of this has had meat on it. There you go. We got Pops running that link right there for Sunrise Thank Services. Y'all check them out. Sunrise is an awesome friend. Y'all make sure to check him out. Makes great jams and jellies and moonshines too, like Mrs. AAP was saying. Okay, so we're going to do a quick... Southern style sweet tea. A quick dip. Quick dip. Quick dip. And a quick dip. And you drinking my tea? How to get me some of that tea? Heck yeah, this is another good thing about Southern Mill. Get you some Southern tea too. Don't be yeah, the house is destroyed. We've got a bunch of couch potatoes in here. Look, get this floor cleaned up, son. A couple of couch potatoes going on. What you playing, Luke? <laughs> we have six kids in that, so it's usually pretty much trashed up here. We do keep it pretty clean, but I mean, that lasts about, I'm what, about you. an hour, Ma? Yeah, if I'm lucky. We got to ask told by Tina. What's up, Tina? How you doing this evening? You're sneaking my tea. Hang on, let me get a net. Bam, there we go, a net. As told by Tina. Bam, there we go. If y'all have got any content out there y'all would like to share, feel free to drop your links. Y'all are blue now as well, too. 
Grandma Moses, she's been putting out some stuff as well. Y'all make sure to check her out. She's a great supporter of your channels. Once you get to know her, she'll come over and hit the like and watch your videos. Yeah. Grandma Moses has been around a long time. Y'all check her out. Joe Awesome One, he sings some cool songs on his channel. He's always he's, he's looking out for Nibiru and different things in the sky. Y'all check him out. He's got some awesome sky footage. Okay, y'all. So, I'm bringing one pan's worth of meat over and all I'm doing I'm doing a dip in the egg with one hand and then I'm coming right over to the flour with the other <laughs> and I'm bringing it over so I have a flour hand and a wet hand and it's easy to get going and get both my hands you get Sky watch your footage since this thing's letting you add moderator bam there you go my friend Sky watch your footage if you got any new content I want to drop your link. Feel free to do so, my friend. Yeah, I'm not used to talking much when I'm cooking, so I got to get used to talking to everybody and telling what the heck I'm doing. Watch your potatoes. I mean, are we making mashed potatoes or are we just doing the butter and salt and pepper? Butter, or what are we doing? Potato. Butter, salt, and pepper? Are they getting about there? They're getting there. I'm going to do a little bit more meat on this and then, actually, yeah, I'll do one more strip. This, uh, like I said, this is not anything crazy <laughs> as far as the recipe. It can be messy. See, I got flour everywhere. What's up, Joe Smack? How you doing tonight, my friend? Joe Smack! I'm breading some uh, fried steak, you guys. And I am doing an egg wash before I batter it. I'm flipping it in here and making sure I'm getting all the cricks and crevices of it. I always let my batter rest for a second before I go to the fryer. Um, let's see here. Get everything a little extra dusting. It's a little bit harder too when you got somebody filming you the whole time and you're trying to explain everything. It does kind of slow the whole process down. So if y'all want to make this, if y'all haven't ever made it before, I mean, it wouldn't be near as long as what it's taken us to do right now. She's explaining everything. If we were just in gear cooking, it wouldn't take you half as long. But you do need a good countertop setup. You see, I mean, between all the bowls and the dredging of the meat, I mean, it takes a little bit of room. That's one reason why I made this wall when we modeled the kitchen. I did it this way was to give her a long area for prepping to work her way right up to the stove top. Definitely great to do. So you got your meat hot, mama? I'm grease. Well, your grease hot. <laughs> Paul Peck, what's up, brother? How you doing tonight, hey, Paul? Paul. Good to see you, bro. So I'm getting a little bit of sizzle out of this when I drop the water in, but I'm not getting enough of the sizzle to say that I'm hot enough for that yet. So you pretty I'm much want to that. cook steak fast and hot. You want to have that heat way up. You want to cook it fast. Yep. So I'm bumping it up, but it's good. That meat right there is resting. Um, I want that batter and coating to stick on there and not really stick to the bottom of the pan as much as I can help it. Um, there is going to be a good bit stuck to the bottom of the pan. I ain't going to lie. If y'all are blue, if you got any new content out there, drop the links. Everybody check everybody's content out. That's important for each one of us. Paul Peck's got over 100,000 subscribers. Check him out. He's got great content. Definitely want to check his channel out. Yeah, absolutely. If you're doing any drywall work at all, Paul Peck can help simplify things if you watch what he's got. Let me get David turned blue here. Bam, there you go, David. Yeah. Y'all got any new footage, drop those links. And you see these peas are starting to come to a bowl back here. And I do use um, tall pots whenever I'm frying stuff. That kind of goes into consideration too. Um, I could have used a lot shorter of a pot for these potatoes. But I did a tall one because I don't want any extra water flying out and boiling over into that grease. I turned it down a tad. I mean, yeah, that's fine. They're good. They're probably about done, honestly. Potatoes look like they need a little bit of help. I mean, the onions. These are just your so basic a lot of people will make potatoes. mashed potatoes. We like to do the uh, butter and salt and pepper over them. That's a good way to do it. Are you going to do gravy tonight? Mm -hmm. All right. Well, then we can do whatever you want to with them. Yeah. Let's turn those peas down a little bit. Yeah, I'm going to do some gravy over them, so I'll smash them a little bit. That um, oil is coming all the way back up right now, y'all. I didn't want it to hit a really super high temperature fast without anything in it. So I just want to wait for that meat, um, that oil to get all the way back up. Now what I do... I think everybody's waiting on the meat to hit the daggone grease here. We are, we are, we are right now. <laughs> um, drop a little piece of that flour in there and see what happens. Well, I'm going to go ahead and just drop this piece right here and see what happens. I'm going to bring it over here to this back side. Just like that. 
Yeah, so that's not bad right there. No, it's not bad. It's still heating up a little bit. I'm just going to go around the pan. Yeah, you might want to let it get just a smidgen hotter. I wouldn't fill the whole pan no, up I'm yet. No, not filling up yet. It's still getting hot. I hear that good sizzle, though. But if the pan is not hot enough, they'll see what happens. Some of that flour dredges off. And I don't want all my flour dredging off. It won't be too bad, though. No. BB but. Truth still up in there saying, oh my goodness, I'm starving right now. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to continue around the edge with the little pieces, the thinner pieces. We got one good friend running the link for another good friend. That's Pops William Newell running that link for uh, Mr. Sunrise Services. Y'all check him out. Paul Lippert. What's going on, Paul? How's everything going, hey, man? Mr. Lippert. Just ate some lamb, put a wrap with fries and calamari. Woo, that it good, was man. good. Your meal looks yuck. <laughs> oh, my goodness. <laughs> I am just gonna continue around, you guys. I guarantee it's good, my friend. Yeah, it don't look too pretty till it comes out. It's also important, you guys, not to overcrowd pan. It's really tempting to overcrowd pan. Um, Caprio, what's up, my friend? And I think about that as I'm going around because you don't get. A good transfer. Scott Brogan, what's up, brother? Hey, Scott. Tell Jenny I said hello. You should be good to go now, Gabrielle Tone. Alright. You'll see what I did. Just kind of flip the first two, three that were ready to be flipped. You start to see that golden brown on the underneath, and you can flip them over. And I just keep loading the pan. Going around. Woo, this thing's frying nice. You know, I heard somebody say the other day when you got somebody come in and they say something negative or they leave you a thumbs down, they're still your fan because they can't leave you alone. They'll come in there and try to make you feel bad, but it don't matter if you get a thumbs down, a thumbs up, whatever. It yeah. still helps you out. So they don't do nothing but help you out even when they come in acting negative. Shark Girl, what is up? How you doing tonight, Shark Girl? Good to see you tonight. Hello. So, just, it don't matter. You can turn okay. your thumbs on and off like I do. It don't really give them the time of the day to come in and do anything. But in the end, they're still your fan, even though they try to be hateful towards you because they can't get you out of their minds. So, bam. Appreciate any comment, whether it's negative or good. Nigor, what's up, brother? How you been doing, man? So, we have got a couple pieces that are about ready to already come out. Y'all see how fast beef goes when you're frying. And I am actually going to keep over here. And get me another set <laughs> And the peas are pretty much done. I'm going to turn them way yeah, down. Yeah, they can be all down. You know canned peas basically just heat them up and they're ready to eat. Turn the potatoes down a little bit more. These are this one up, what I do on my trash can over here. I don't use it for much because everything sticks to it, but it's good for a resting rack. Exactly, Annette. Exactly. Okay, y'all. I'm going to come over here. Those first couple pieces are already done. We got Gabrielle dropping that link. Y'all check him out. Grab up his channel while he's here. He's been a great supporter over here at our channel. Appreciate that very much. Wendy O oh, has a link. You want to zoom in on those? Christy keeps the beef. Yeah, boy. <laughs> William says, can he wash dishes? <laughs> <laughs> oh, that is my trash pan, Mr. Bill. I've had this pan over 20 years. It's about done. I don't use it for really nothing except for catching drippings like this. And you don't have to worry so much about fried steak either because you can basically eat steak raw. I don't like eating processed meats like that, but it don't have to be all the way cooked all the way through until it's chewy. Yeah. And, um, Mr. AP, I'm yes, going to put this down over here on the table, I guess. We're running out of counter space tonight with all this meat. I 
I've been striving to you guys this channel and I'm doing my artwork so yeah I've been busy heck yeah shark girls doing artwork and I'll check out shark girls channel as well if you've got any links to any new video content drop those links y'all grab up the links when they come through no grits <laughs> no. Gabrielle said no grits, no grits. <laughs> smell -o vision would be awesome wouldn't it one of those things I doubt we'll ever have. I think it's pretty much impossible, but that would be an awesome thing to have. <laughs> okay. Ms. AP, will you get me the pan off of the table? Yes, ma'am. The fry pan? Yeah. What's that, Bubba? <laughs> <laughs> you got it in one hand? Okay. I'm coming Ooh, that's gonna be some good eating right there. Yeah, boy. You can see how that egg, um, when it goes on, thank you, Paul. Really, really helps fluff it up. I can get it. You got it. You got one hand, baby. So do you. <laughs> <laughs> we almost lost the whole thing. <laughs> that would have been just a tragedy. All right. So I snuck all this extra raw meat into the bowl over here, trying to get a move on on it. Um. So I'm going to come over here, do a couple at a time. So Sophie, will you flip those two there in the pan for me? How are they? Got them? Looking good. <laughs> I'm just going to keep dredging over here. Try to keep one hand in the flour. Hey, Barbaranda, how you doing this evening? If I've missed anybody. I hope y'all are having a great evening. <laughs> As I am helping me, not even looking at chat. Guess this is the craziest day in America, election day. So far, it's been pretty peaceful. I hope it'll remain that way. I don't peaceful. see any reason for people to act chaotic and crazy. Peaceful. No matter who wins, I mean, it's still America. We should unite and make things right. What is up, Food Forest Permaculture? How you doing? Food Forest. What's going on? Good to see you, my friend. Another great channel right there. Y'all check out yes. Food Forest Permaculture. He does literally live in a food forest. Y'all check him out. And y'all, I'm bringing this meat over, the seasoned meat out of the egg, over to this flour. I'm not getting meat. Don't not you yet. drop any of that meat. Oh, you little rascal. You starving, bud? Yeah. Tell everybody you're getting hungry. I'm hungry. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my gosh. I am, uh, I'm going over here. Look, Mr. AP, that, those might be ready to come out, and that burner grease can go down, and it's getting dark over there. Woo! It's too dark, you let it go. Yeah. I'll have to do it for the I'm going to turn that thing down to six. I don't know if y'all like using tongs in the kitchen, but having a good pair of tongs, the long handle tongs, boy, them things make a good difference. We've got several pair in here, but they came from some of the restaurants that we did on before. I'm going to rescue that grease and add some shortening to cool it down real quick. I think it's fine. I just need to flip it a little bit quicker. <laughs> We're going to be making some good gravy with that right there. I wouldn't use a silicone in that. Alright. Y'all might witness a house fire tonight. Oh, you're crazy. <laughs> that would be just a bonus, I guess. <laughs> Hopefully yeah. not. That would be terrible in here. That all that is is the flour dredging off, you guys. That ain't nothing. That's just a little bit of crispies at the bottom. And you'll see when I strain the grease out, I'll get all that out and then put some fresh grease from here back in. Alright, that little bit of crispy right there, just brought that down to temperature enough to go right back to frying. Oh, yeah, that's good right there. <laughs> Mr. AP about to burn us down on TV. <laughs> that's one thing about going live. You can't redo anything you've already done. So if you mess up, there's no going back and editing the video. There so it's all live. No going back on that one. <laughs> Normally, we'd probably have this done in about 30 minutes. But being live, it takes longer when you're explaining everything. Well, plus I did the double batch of meat. We got some... 
The restaurant was doing great, the gullies. Unfortunately, I let them go when I left South Carolina to come to Michigan. I had two seafood restaurants going. The price of seafood going up so rapidly, it just didn't make sense to try to keep them going unless you're serving alcohol in that industry. We did not have the alcohol in the restaurants at the time and trying to make it just on the sale of seafood and paying all the bills, it gets really tough, especially with the fluctuating seafood prices out there. You know, if you open a restaurant, you have to have that alcohol. That's the alcohol is the icing on the cake. Yep, that's how you make money. So there was no sense in me leaving those restaurants open, even though they were doing well, had good ratings and everything. You got Tom? <laughs> I know if you're starting the back left. Well, holy moly, you got a lot of meat up in there. I got a lot of meat in there, baby. I'm cooking now, baby. <laughs> a little bit of crisp on there. Those breaking out already. Let that side go for a second. Okay. Kind of hard to do with one hand and a phone. I got it. I got it. You zoom in on the meat. I got it. Wait to flip that last one right there. Can yeah, that stuff that cooks really, one? really quick. Oh, yeah, you flip that. Flip that. Flip that. And get that little one in. I'm walking in. So this is different, you know. Maybe we're not professionals, but <laughs> we're trying. Truth Seeker, what is up, my brother? How you doing? I thought I smelled something burning. <laughs> Me too. I ain't lying. <laughs> Miss JP was a trip, y'all. But this is fun, you know. We have to cook for a lot of people, so yeah, it gets kind of chaotic sometimes. I even um, I have a splatter screen. And I didn't even put it on, so I got splatter all over everything. I'll come back through. Hey, Joni, how you doing? Good to see you and Scott tonight. Is Joni here? Yes, ma'am. Hey, Joni. Hope y'all are having a good evening. Yeah, Mr. AP about burning the town. That wasn't me. That was you. <laughs> That's me. Chris meat, Chris meat, Chris meat. Woo, that's looking good right there, boy. Look at you, meat. Mm. Mm hmm. <laughs> yeah, it's good. And we got a good crust on it. Is what Almost I'm as about. good as if I had made it. Oh, my goodness gracious. <laughs> really? Now, you can see these are thicker than some of the first ones. You see that little blood running right there? That's how I know that these ain't ready yet. Barbara Randa, that's what's good about having all these boys. They get to clean the kitchen every night. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> I got five helpers. We got an 11 year old, a 15 year old, and a 10 year old that all chip in on cleaning up the kitchen at night. So it goes by pretty smooth, even though we still stay in here and help out a little bit. Yeah, you gotta tell them what to do. Thank y'all for being here. I know that it's kind of crazy tonight, burning <laughs> stuff up, splattering grease everywhere, but it's all about having fun at the same time. Yeah, that's all right. I ain't worried about that. I tell you, it tastes great though. You can see which one Mrs. AAP made. <laughs> yeah, right. That's the one you burned. <laughs> You're crazy. You were going after that one. Uh -uh, that one Lead by good. action. Dang right. The baby's doing great, Joni. Thank you very much for asking. That's the best, says BB Truth. Y'all make sure to check out BB Truth as well. She's been dropping her link. Joe Awesome One's up in here cracking up with a big thumbs up. Thank you, Joe. We appreciate you, brother. I think that we... Joni said he's adorable. Thank you, Joni. Aww. Let's see if he's right around this corner. Don't be showing the messes too much now. Where's Levi? Landon holding him? Where's he at, Loke? Landon, grab him. This is awesome. I hope you're excited. I hope you're in your anxiety right now. You're fine. What's up, bud? What you doing? Say hi to everybody. <laughs> hey, Boots. <laughs> yeah, buddy. Always looks good in a picture. What you doing? <laughs> He's just in here chilling with his brothers. Yes, sir. What's up, buddy? Can you give me the phone? Landon can give you the phone in just a few minutes. Luke, get your room cleaned up, son. He wants his room to be blue. This is how he painted for me. Anyway, we're going to be repainting that. The rest of the house is actually looking really good, except for blankets on the floor and other things like that. But having these kids running around in here all the time gets crazy. Oh, yeah. Speaking of crazy, I 
Ooh, that's looking good. <laughs> Test patch. <laughs> So she's gonna make a gravy out of this, so that should be delicious. Yeah. Oh, smell of vision. Everybody says that, Joni. I wish it existed for sure. The baby again. Are you wanting to see the baby again, the gullies, or are you saying you just saw the baby again? I think he's just saying he just saw the baby again. <laughs> BB Truth has two boys. We could have stopped that too. It was very peaceful that too. <laughs> By the time we got to four, it's very chaotic. You better get ready to flip these things. Yeah, we'll come right now. You're doing circles around behind you, trying to get us by the and you cleaned up a little bit. And... No, we're not there yet. And it's okay. What y'all is the grease itself is actually not bad, y'all. And I'll show y'all in a minute. What you're seeing is all the drippings on the bottom that fried out. This is a shallow pan. Um, I didn't do a ton of grease in it. It's not like a deep fryer. So uh, what you're seeing is not burnt grease. It's just a little bit of burnt flour at the bottom. And it ain't going to change nothing. <laughs> I promise. I don't think Biden's going to be able to beat Trump on this election. Don't even get into it. <laughs> yeah. If everything goes fairly and all, oh, I think Trump's going to win them all. I'm getting ready to grab a pan, strain that grease into. <laughs> Paul Peck starving too. Yeah, you know, going right at dinner time, it's almost like we need to put a reminder out way earlier in the day, and that way maybe y'all could cook with us at the same time. I don't know how that would work or not, but anyway. <laughs> All right, these potatoes are done. You and done. Divvy cooking. We can strain these. I'm running the water while I strain these potatoes over here. Sounds good, Shark Girl. You have a good evening. Thank you very much for joining us tonight. Beaver, what's up, my friend? How you been doing, Beaver? Good to see you, man. I hope everything's going well with you. <laughs> William Pop said he's so hungry he can eat a piece of Paul Peck's drywall, <laughs> drywall <laughs> tubes, drywall. <laughs> oh my goodness, y'all. Yeah, I'm pretty much starving too. I mean, this is actually taking a little bit longer than I expected. Because I did two batches of meat this evening. But yeah, I don't mind. Zoom in on the the hungrier the better. What's up, Mama? Zoom in on these potatoes. Great job, Mrs. AAP, coming from the Gullies. Thank you. The Gullies just did a um, Atomic two-time spicy chicken wing challenge. Check that out. I believe he finished all six wings under three minutes. I could be wrong. Check out the channel. All right, y'all. The Gullies are great friends, too. Make sure to grab them up. Oh, yeah. Scuba Steve's up in here saying, what's up, the Beaver, too? We got Tampa Boy Custom. What's up, Nubs? How you doing tonight, bro? What is going on, y'all? Hope you're having a good night tonight, my friend. We're in here making the country fried steak. Misfits and Dreamers, bam, just bombed you up with five bucks. Mrs. Really? AAP said, oh how's gosh. it going? We're doing great, Misfits and Dreamers, and we hope you're Hello. doing great, too. Misfits and Dreamers has a trivia night. Y'all make sure to check them out over there on the yeah. trivia channel. Okay, y'all. Awesome friends, too. Thank you very much, Misfits and Dreamers, and we hope y'all are doing well. I'm not going to do nothing, anything else with these potatoes. They're going to sit right here. They're going to be covered, they're smothered and covered in butter. They're off, so they're sitting here in butter, salt, pepper, and when I go to scoop them onto the plate, they'll break apart a little bit. Um, I got a gorgeous scald on these, this one, this batch, um, just because of the, you know, the burnt at the bottom, the crispies at the bottom, the pan drippings. Um, I love a pretty scald on chicken and on beef. It just takes it up a whole nother notch. But, uh, I'm sure somebody would send that back at the restaurant now. Okay. Y'all make sure to check out Tampa Boys Customs as well, too. He's got a great channel. Them boys know how to have a good time. Dirt bikes, go-karts, you name it. They build their own vehicles a lot of times. Awesome trikes. Check them out. 
Tampa Boys Customs. They've got a great channel, got a lot of friends. Go over there and grow your network with some awesome people. This is almost done, you guys, and we can go into the gravy, how I do my gravy. Um, you have a good night too, Shark Girl, and we'll be over there to check out your content. Appreciate you coming tonight. Thank you very much. Appreciate everybody coming in to support Mrs. AAP's cooking channel. Yes, thank you guys. It's going to be a variety channel. <laughs> I'm trying to figure out exactly what to keep my channel's name. I think I'm going to go with a variety channel. BB Truth, bam, much love. Thanks to the subs and helping our channels grow. BB Truth, thank you greatly. Yeah. You know, it's not really a grow network right now, but I do love growing channels as much as I can. Yeah. Greatly appreciate the $5 super chat from your oh BB Truth. Thank, thank you so you. much for that. Absolutely, I appreciate it. Now, y'all can see the first batch was lighter than your last batch because you start to get some pan dripping when you do your last batch. Um, that connect on. The second batches of meat always turn up a little bit darker when you're using the same pan over and over again. And um, I'm not worried about that grease dripping through between the layers of meat. Grease is grease. We've got a lot of awesome friends up in here right now. I know there's 22 people up in here, and I think we've got 22 of our best subscribers in here right now. Some of them got a little darker than others, but you know what? I don't care. I like them dark like that. Fried steak cooked like that. Woo! That's going to yes. be delicious, okay. Mama. So Heck yeah. I'm moving it out the way over here. Very grateful for all of y'all being yes. here with us. I'm like I said, head. I believe that we've got some of the best ones that are subscribed to our channel in here with us right now, and I'm thankful for that. Heck yeah, Tampa boys. Be careful, Mama. Don't drop that on your no, feet now. I'm not dropping nothing. You have to drain this. When you've run, see all the stuff in the bottom? When you've run a double, triple batch of meat like that and we let it get hot like we did. Let me see the with JP. I'm the white, but leave that right there. I'm going to scoot back out. That's not going to hurt your countertop. No, uh -uh. Not at all. Ah, the gullies just bombed us up with five bucks. The gullies, thank y'all very much for that. <laughs> you can't get the paper towels out. Greatly appreciate that. <laughs> The Gully's got a great channel and they're great friends as well. Like I said, they did the Wings Challenge. Check them out. Go over there and have a good time with them. And grow your channel with the Gullies as well. I'm just wiping out some of this dark. Folks, I've got 5% on my phone. We're going to let this sucker run. Hopefully, we can get to the gravy. we got to get that gravy, Mama. Everything else is ready. we got to get that gravy. <laughs> we got 5%. I'm getting it. I'm getting it. Okay, y'all. <laughs> If you look right here, all that sediment settled to the bottom. So when I'm scooping, I'm getting some pan drippings, but I'm also getting mostly grease, okay? So I come back with about two scoops. And that's all I need. I'm not gonna save that grease, okay? That grease is done burnt and scalded and it's done for. Um, I'm gonna come back over here and I'm gonna bump it up. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take these, uh, everything that was left over from all of the meat there's even meat pieces in here okay i'm putting them in here I gravy love... could be tricky for some people but it's really not that hard no this is going to be a thicker gravy so i can go with more flour and like i told you in the beginning i wanted to use all the flour that was left over so I didn't use fresh flour for this gravy. <laughs> Truth Seeker said, grease, love it. <laughs> <laughs> this was bacon grease, shortening. Beaver says, love you, mama. Aw, thank you, Beaver. It's good to see you. I like seeing all the same little faces. Barbarina says, what's up to Bob, too? Is uh, Bob's here? Truth Seeker? Tampa Boys Customs on, my friends. When we get out of here, that would be a great place for y'all to go check out. Okay. Tampa Boys Customs. Y'all be glad you did. So you can see right here, y'all, the meat is in there cooking a little bit getting some more meat in there i've got um that gravy cooking i keep it from around the edges to scoop to the middle like that like i do the eggs when i do pan eggs full-time dream welcome to the show how you doing this evening this is going to be a beef gravy so i am going to get it a little bit darker that's why i turned it up a little bit higher hopefully we can get to the gravy before mr ap loses his battery yeah you best hurry <laughs> I can't hurry you. Kids are doing great, Misfits and Dreamer. Thank you very much for asking. Little yes. Levi's doing great. All of them are growing rapidly, eating like pigs. 
Yeah, leave us. <laughs> this more. lockdown has really been fattening them up big time. I can't wait for things to get back to normal. Hopefully they do. Kids need to get out. And excuse my splatter over here, y'all. Look at that. Oh my goodness. I got a layer of fat on this whole kitchen there. I seen 69 Mammy 95, if that's who we're talking about. I didn't get to join her live that she had the other day, but I saw that she had a great crowd that ended up over there. She had a good number, so I was really? glad to see that. Aww. Heck yeah. She's a sweetheart. We so we've got about 4% left on now my phone. I'm hoping fun. that we can get this gravy done without my we phone are? dying. We're already getting some color to it. Look at that. We're right up at the finishing you part of the circle here. You brush gravy, Mr. AP. You know that. <laughs> and look at all them bits and pieces in there, y'all. That's meat and little pieces from the pan dripping. So we got all kinds of goodies in there. Can't rush beef gravy. Now, if this was chicken gravy or turkey gravy, I could go ahead and do it right now. But anytime you add your water after you got your roux going, it's going to lighten up your color. Yeah, the more so, you cook it right now, the darker you want it. Yeah. I love the darker, the better. Yeah, I love a dark. You can see it's toasting, y'all. We're cooking that flour is what we're doing. We're simmering that flour. We've got some meat pieces in here, that big old chunk of meat right now. That's awesome. Beaver, tell 69 Mammy 95 we said what's up and hope she's doing well as well, too. Yeah. You ready to dump that water in? Not yet. One more second. You get nervous? I just don't want the phone to die. Oracles and beyond. How y'all doing hey this evening? Hey, Oracles. So this is all of the drippings. Love you too, Barbara. The meat. All the meat drippings are in here. And that's what I'm looking for right there. You see how we're getting a little pasty in the middle? That's what you want for your beef gravy, y'all. And we're going to come in. I know what y'all are thinking that... What the heck is she doing with this gravy? <laughs> Are you thinking that? You know how much gravy I made in this house? Oh, yeah. We could even go another second. Look at that. Oracles and Beyond, everybody. Y'all check out Oracles. How y'all doing tonight? Oracles and Beyond. Good to see y'all tonight. We are still fitting in, so I'm going to add some more. And this is the beef gravy, y'all. I've got 3%. My phone's literally about to cut off. No, we're doing good. All I'm going to do is salt and pepper this to taste, you guys. And it is done. I can go ahead and sneak a plate, probably. It's actually browner than it looks for some reason. It's coming in really light looking over the phone. Is it? I could have done it darker. But either way, it's going to be good. Add salt to your likings. Yes. Oh, it needs some salt. This wasn't like the beef roast I did. So Saxy Matt is on with the music trivia too. Y'all check out Saxy Matt. Y'all could follow uh, Misfits and Dreamers over there too. My phone's getting ready to die if it does. I want to thank every one of y'all for being with us again yeah. tonight. Greatly appreciate it. Absolutely. I know I keep saying we're coming back with a 420 giveaway and we are. We've got an epic giveaway. Mrs. AAP snuck more of those fireballs in the cart. So we're going to sit down probably tonight or tomorrow evening and have a good time. And so I look forward to having y'all there with us tomorrow too and have an awesome 420 okay. giveaway. 69 Mammy 95, what up? There she is. How you been doing, Hello, Mammy? Hello, Miss Ma'am. Pops, you know it's always good to see you, bro. Yasmin Wu, good to see you this evening. Hope you're doing well. So y'all, we've got some peas and we did some bacon. Float, bizzle, bam. What's up, brother? And I'm going to come over here and sneak some meat. This will be little loops plate. Mr. AP can eat more than that. And I'm gonna come over here. Got some sweet tea. Bam! Yeah, heck yeah. This gravy has already just been salted and peppered and turned all the way down to low. We still got a little sizzle on it. You just want to come across the potatoes and the meat. And bam. Bam. So there you go. We know it took a little while to do, but it's an awesome meal. It's a southern favorite. Y'all try it. We appreciate y'all very much for joining us tonight. Y'all check out Truth Seeker's channel as well. He's got a great yeah. channel. I look forward to seeing you back on as well too, bro. Paul Peck, bam. Always good, my friend Beaver. BB Truth Sound Man, William Newell, everybody up in here. Misfits and Dreamers, yeah. the Gollies, Jen Eaton Show. Thank y'all so much for everything. Joe, awesome one. Yasmin Wu. We'll Yasmin. catch y'all next time. Oracles and beyond. We hope y'all have a great evening. Thank y'all yes, very much for joining guys. us. Until then, we'll see y'all soon, my friends. Y'all take care and stay safe out there. Be careful after this election the next few days. Don't get caught up in the wrong places. Just kind of keep an eye on what you're doing and where you're going. Uh, that's all I can recommend. Anyway, love y'all all, and y'all take care, my friends.